So before I start, I want to just say up front, and I'll remind you again at the end, that I'm not going to take any questions because this is an active investigation, all right? So I want to provide you an update of what we've learned since the interview that I provided early this morning. Our service officers received a call just after midnight for a disturbance involving a female destroying property. She was cutting wires to a fire alarm system to the apartment complex. When officers arrived, they contacted the woman with SAFD in the parking lot. When they contacted her, she provided them with her name, date of birth, an apartment number. <clears throat> it appeared that Mrs. Pettis, Ms. Pettis, was having a mental health crisis. Officers attempted to get her to walk toward their patrol car, but she ran back to her apartment and she locked the door. Officers tried to speak with her through an open window after they determined that the damage to the fire alarm was a felony criminal mischief. One officer removed the screen from an open window on the porch after which Ms. Pettis threw a glass candle at the officer. The officers backed up and waited for, an additional, waited for additional officers and a supervisor to arrive. When other officers arrived, one group of officers positioned themselves at the front door of the apartment, while another group was in the back of the apartment at the rear patio. Officers continued to order Ms. Pettis to come outside, but she refused. The officers who were positioned at the patio were the officers involved in the shooting. One officer spoke to Ms. Pettis, and two officers jumped the railing to get, into her, get onto her patio. One officer reported that Ms. Pettis had picked up a hammer and was approaching them from inside. Ms. Pettis, while still in her apartment, swung the hammer in the direction of the officer and struck the window, breaking it. One officer fired his weapon at Ms. Pettis. Afterwards, the first, after the first officer fired his weapon, Ms. Pettis didn't appear to have been struck initially, and she stepped back away from the window toward a hallway. Ms. Pettis advanced toward the window again while still holding the hammer, and all three officers opened fire. Ms. Pettis was struck at least two times. After the shooting, Ms. Pettis forced entry and officers forced their way into the apartment and provided medical aid before EMS arrived. Ms. Pettis was pronounced deceased at the scene by EMS. After reviewing the evidence of this case and speaking with the District Attorney's Civil Rights Division, warrants were issued for the three officers who shot and, and killed uh, Melissa Pettis. The three officers are being charged with murder. They've already been taken into custody. The three officers have been suspended without pay pending a full investigation. They are Sergeant Alfred Flores, 14 years on the department, Nathaniel Villalobos, two years of service, and Eliezer Alejandro, five years of service. The shooting, action, the shooting officer's actions were not consistent with SAPD's policy and training, and they placed themselves in a situation where they used deadly force, which was not reasonable given all the circumstances that we now, as we now understand them. Consistent with the department's critical incident video release, the department worked all day to expedite the publishing of this video from the shooting that was released to you. Three separate investigations will be conducted, two by SAPD Internal Affairs and Homicide, as well as an independent investigation conducted by the Bear County District Attorney's Office Civil Rights Division. This investigation is ongoing, and while we don't anticipate any additional officers facing criminal charges, Internal Affairs will investigate the actions of every officers of every officers. IA will investigate the actions of every officer that was on the scene. The full administrative findings will then be put before the Complaint and Administrative Review Board for review. The District Attorney will receive the full investigative packet when we have completed the criminal investigation. We do not have a timeline as to when that will be done. Our condolences to, Mel uh, to Melissa Pettis' entire family. I want to assure her daughter that this incident will, be, will continue to be thoroughly investigated, as are all officer-involved shootings. This event does not accurately reflect the high level of dedication and commitment demonstrated by our over 2,500 officers, nor should it undermine the extensive and advanced training 
we provide to ensure the health of the safety of both our officers and the community that they serve. And again, as I said in the beginning of this, I will not take any questions because this is an ongoing investigation. Thank you very Thank much you for showing up tonight. Thank you very much. Thanks. Yeah.